1971, David Ben-Gurion, the former Prime Minister of Israel, celebrated his 85th birthday. And in order to mark this event, the whole of the government that was sitting in Jerusalem took a day and went down to the Negev to visit him in his kibbutz home in Stabokin. And um, when he got up to speak on his birthday, at his birthday celebrations, it was no surprise to anybody that he wanted to talk about the Tanakh. David Ben-Gurion had spent his career learning and studying and wanting to teach about the Tanakh. He was even famous for calling together the press corps um, when he was prime minister in order to make a press statement or a release about some kind of new insight that he had into a verse. So no one was surprised when he wanted to talk about the Tanakh. And when he got up and spoke about the Tanakh, he wanted, Tanakh, he wanted to talk about his biblical hero. Now, I can imagine everybody in the crowd thinking, well, who do you think was David Ben-Gurion, the founding prime minister of the state of Israel's biblical hero? Was it his namesake, David HaMelech, King David, the, the king that was responsible for winning all those wars and bringing peace to the land? Um, was it Moshe Rabbeinu, the great prophet that brought the Jews, Jews out of slavery in Egypt and through the desert towards the land of Israel? Who do you think David Ben-Gurion, this great leader, related to the most? And the answer that he said that for him was his biblical hero shocked everybody. Because he said it was the biblical prophet of Jeremiah, or Yirmiyahu in Hebrew. Why was it so surprising that David Ben-Gurion, Prime Minister of Israel, is going to choose Yirmiyahu as his biblical hero? When we think about who Yirmiyahu was, he was perhaps, in the minds of the Zionist leaders, the antithesis or the everything against what it meant to be a Zionist. Yirmiyahu was the prophet that preached against Jewish independence in the land of Israel. He was the prophet that preached and turned around and said, we need to, um, we need to make, to uh, maintain the relationships that they had with the Babylonians and pay the taxes and not rebel and not be independent. Maybe the opposite of the Zionist ideal of Jewish independence and Jewish strength. In fact, he, the prophet Jeremiah, was the one that was speaking out against the Jewish people at the time, rebuking them, saying that they were wrong, in fact, calling upon destruction. Jeremiah even went as far to say in the following words, um, Oh, give their children over to famine. Mow them down by the sword. Let their wives be bereaved of children and husbands. Jeremiah calls for the destruction of the state. How can it be that the creator of the state, Davin Ben-Gurion, identifies so much with Jeremiah that was calling for the destruction of the state? Jeremiah was the prophet that was persecuted by the government for not promoting the idea of Jewish independence in the land of Israel. So what was it about Jeremiah that was so attractive to David Ben-Gurion? I think the answer is this, is that there was a very, very important key message to Jeremiah that I think David Ben-Gurion wanted to say. To quote Ben-Gurion in his speech, he said the following in 1971, our status in the world will not be determined by our supposed material wealth, nor by our military power, but by the moral light of our undertakings. Said Ben-Gurion in 71, in a similar light to Yirmiyahu, we need to take on the reason why we are here, here in the land of Israel, which is to be a light unto the nations which is to be a strong moral voice. And Ben-Gurion, maybe it took him until the ripe old age of 85 to realize that this was the key to what it means to be a Zionist. It wasn't about strength. It wasn't about power. It was about who we were 
as a people. But I think there was another element to Yirmiyahu that was so important to Ben-Gurion. And I think that was the idea that Jeremiah didn't just stick to this line of criticizing the people and rebuking them. When destruction eventually did come on Tisha B'Av 19 in, 5, in 586 BCE, um, Jeremiah changes his tune and he becomes this wonderful prophet of hope. He was the one that said, Odi Shamab Are Yehuda, we're going to hear again in the hills of Yehuda, Kol Sason Ve Kol Simcha, the great joys, uh, the calls for joy and song by the bride and the groom. Um, ben, it was Yirmiyahu was the prophet that had this great hope and desire and, and memory of the fact that ultimately the Jewish people are going to go back to their land. And ultimately, the Jewish people are going to have this wonderful relationship with God. One of my favorite verses in the whole of the Tanakh are the words of Yirmiyahu. In the second chapter of his book, he says this. So says Hashem. Zacharti la chesed Ahavat kalulataich. Lechtech acharai ba midbar beeretz lo zrua. So says Hashem. I counted to you your favor, the devotion of your youth, your love as a bride, how you followed me in the wilderness in a land not so. Jeremiah has got this amazing memory to think back to that time of the Jews of the wilderness that left Egypt uh, with God after the Exodus. He describes this generation as being this generation of this loving kindness, this great devotion that the Jewish people had with God at that time, which is a strange thing for Jeremiah to say. Because what do we know about this generation that left Egypt? What did they do? All they did the whole time was complain, rebel, the sin of the golden calf, the food wasn't good enough. Everything was the, the, the sin with the, with, the, um, with the spies. How can it be? that Yirmiyahu uses such beautiful words to describe this generation of the Jewish people that all they did was complain. I think the answer is this, is that Jeremiah saw the big picture. Yes, there were problems. Yes, there were challenges. But ultimately, the Jewish people in this generation left Egypt and followed God into the desert just on the back of a promise. They had this great connection, connection and devotion and dedication to God that led them into the desert. And Jeremiah is reminding us that even though there were problems and even though there were difficulties, we must remember the bigger picture. And I think that that is what David Ben-Gurion is talking about when he relates to Yirmiyahu in his ripe old age of 85. Yes, there's challenges. Yes, we need to remember what we're about and the purpose of the state of Israel and why we are here. But equally, we also need to appreciate the amazing achievements that we've done and remember the big picture. Ultimately, we were living through a time of Jewish independence in the land of Israel that had not been seen for thousands of years. And Ben-Gurion had this ability to see in Yirmiyahu Jeremiah, this model that on the one hand he could criticize for things that needed to be fixed, to overcome the challenges that still faced the Jewish people. And at the same time, he was still this great messenger of hope. And ultimately, this was Ben Gurion. Ben Gurion was this figure like Jeremiah that wasn't 
wasn't scared to say his truth, wasn't scared to, 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 to put forward what he thought was the right thing to do, even if it was unpopular, even if it wasn't what everybody wanted to hear. This is what Ben-Gurion was, and this is what Yirmiyahu was. And I see in them this great uh, comparison of these two great figures from Jewish history. Thank you.